Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today we try to answer one of the most requested quandaries from the comment section over the past year of videos. How much torque, if any, do you lose by using an impact square drive adapter? And we're using data from just about a year's worth of combined testing as well. The scenario is set and likely one not unfamiliar to you. You have a large impact wrench and need to use a socket you only have in smaller drive size, or you have a smaller impact wrench and need to run a larger socket maybe one that they don't make for your gun size, some type of specialty socket. Whatever the case is, you sneak over to the toolbox and covertly slap one of these puppies on, hoping one of your coworkers doesn't notice and make you feel the shame of not having the perfect tool for the job. And it sometimes does a trick, but sometimes not. We aim to answer when they can't get it done, would an impact wrench with an appropriate drive size have worked? Basically, how much are you losing by using? Before starting this channel, I always had the question in the back of my mind running these things. If I had just bought the half inch model instead of this 3 8 would this axle nut have come off or does the adapter not matter? Can my half inch impact really drive these large 3 quarter inch sockets just as well? Is that YouTuber you're lambasting in the comments section worthy of ridicule for using one of these to test out a tool or is it pretty much representative of that tool's beans? We spent most of the last year periodically testing this very thing with multiple brands, our impacts, viewers impacts, error and cordless tools to bring you representative results we think paint the picture and also yeah we're not going to let the chance of just having some silly fun slip through our fingers either. Let's start in order of size, here's the 3 8 Milwaukee Mid Torque doing its baseline run. This is a size and class of impact wrench that probably is used most often underneath and on the outsides of cars, so pretty representative we think of what we're trying to show today and also about as powerful as 3 8 impacts get from anywhere right here in this M18. So it's all 479 foot-pounds, that's pretty spicy for a little 3 8 Let's check out that adapter for 3 8 to half inch with a Harbor Freight Pittsburgh impact adapter. This is a pretty common scenario, plenty of socket types and sizes are only available in half inch, but 3 8 impacts are putting out half inch impact type numbers nowadays, so you might find yourself adapting more often than ever. That's 349, oof. That's a huge percentage loss, 27%, which we can tally over here right now. If you're curious about socket size differences or the difference between 3 8 and half inch models, we can include those cards at the top of your screen here, but what you're seeing here is basically a massive drop in torque even controlled for those types of differences. Going up in socket size, that's hard to believe, but we saw it with smaller 3 8 drive impacts that we've tested with this as well always about 20% or so or higher. That's like turning your $230 M18 Gen 2 mid-torque into a $110 Craftsman mid-torque. If this is the type of losses we're in store for, things are not looking so hot for impact adapters. Next up, to paint a more comparable picture, we'll be using the same mid-torque, but in half inch, the 2962-20, using a half inch to 3 8 adapter this time. This will be the first example of reducing a drive size or going down in size. So let's see how that handles the beans. Yep, just 258 and it's no more. And I gotta tell you right now, this is pretty typical of half inch to 3 8 impact adapters like all of them. They all break at we found 170 to 210 foot-pounds by hand with linear torque or typically 240 to 350 foot-pounds with an impact wrench. Some do make it through the cracks though, here's a rare run of one surviving. So 419 down from 451, really not bad. Pretty good percentage wise when you get there, which well, often you won't. We'll leave a link to the $10 set below that did this run, but just keep in mind we've purchased Cromali, CRV, we've tried Pittsburgh Harbor Freight, Icon, Tecton, Proto USA, 
Lexavon, Snap-on, Nico. I wish I could tell you there's a golden bullet for this one, but it's just luck with the draw. One run, it might be fine. Another, it makes to 245 and then splits in half. It seems like the anvils on these tools, like on the 3.8s Milwaukee, can take a lot more sauce than the adapters, or maybe it's just a hammer versus nail sort of thing going on. Up next is something much less likely to break, half inch into three quarter inch drive now. There's quite a few massive three quarter inch drive sockets we have around here that have no half inch drive equivalent, and you might find yourself doing similar on larger tasks in a bind. So let's find out just how stupid we might have been at times. Four hundred and twenty-one, similar to the three eighths, and another seven percent here. Except this one won't be breaking off seven times out of ten. Not exactly criminal losses there. You might even not notice that when you're using it. If your half-inch impact has the umph, impact away on those three-quarter-inch sockets. I say it's odd that the three eighths to half-inch equivalent of this type of reducer did so poorly. Now, speaking of three-quarter-inch impacts, we're no stranger to those or using adapters on them, despite you maybe not seeing them very much on this channel. If you're curious why, and also why we don't include 1 inch air, it's because we haven't been able to match the manufacturer's specs of 90 psi dynamic running pressure in these guns. Even with an Ingersoll Rand 80 gallon 7.5 horsepower two stage compressor, and even with wall regulator removed and running 3 quarter inch cast iron pipe straight into half inch hose, then that's threaded straight into the gun without fittings. Which means I think a lot of you guys probably aren't getting the most out of your 3 quarter inch air guns either, at least in the shops I've been in. That pressure drop is massive. We expected this on 1 inch guns, but never our 3 quarter inch. Just to see what they do, here's what that looks like on a Matco 3 quarter inch gun versus a Harbor Freight 3 quarter inch. So 760 is pretty good for a 10 second test, but either way, not exactly making what they should be compared to their half inch air counterparts. Just not able to keep 90 PSI in the gun while running, so no point in trying to call out brands for fuzzy power numbers if we can't match the spec they use for their testing. So if a $3,000 compressor and half inch airlines isn't enough, and it takes more expensive compressor or three quarter inch airlines, at that point we're just talking commercial use only and maybe not the focus of what we're trying to do here, but hey, you tell us. In my eyes, this is where three quarter inch cordless shines. Maybe not as much a difference between half inch and three quarter inch power wise, but never has the lack of needing an air hose been more pronounced than would just clicking a battery eliminates all those limitations we were just talking about. If you need to run three quarter inch sockets, this is the easiest route. And when we tested the Milwaukee 2864-20 almost a year ago, thanks to a viewer by the name of Gary who lended it to us, we took that opportunity to test it with a half inch reducer adapter like we often have done in the pursuit of data. So 742 down to 602. There is certainly some losses to be expected at the size range then, more than we expected, 19% here. Though it's the first reducer we've used that proves to not be dying on you all the time. We've been using Pittsburgh ones without issue since the beginning here on multiple projects and they seem to hold up just fine. Some of that loss we feel is the gun picking up some vibration, almost like a procession wobble movement of the gun at high speed. On the 3 quarter inch M18, just in standard form, we noticed it's a lot more smoother and planted than the 2767 half inch version. We feel the larger anvil provides a wider footprint to work against. The half inch adapter, on the other hand, brings it back to that 2767 vibration wise, but worse, in a sort of extended axis away from the gun. I think some of the power lost is the anvil and hammer assembly inside just not working as efficiently due to that. Let's move into the biggest boy in the shop, keeping with the Milwaukee tools we've shown thus far. This is the 1 inch D handle 2868-20 that you run with an HD 12.0 battery. 
We're going to first step this down to three quarter inch. Then with the help of this specialized socket we've only ever found from one overseas source. They're crazy enough to sell it anyways. It's a one inch to half inch adapter. A two size step down reducer that we just frankly want to see. We're going to be doing five second runs with this gun on the dyno because things get a bit wacky on 10 second and beyond. You sort of lose some of that precise data the closer you get to killing this dyno in that 1200 foot pounds or so and beyond. Here's the one inches working torque run. And here it is with a one inch to three quarter inch impact adapter reducer. Three quarter inch sockets ranging in size quite a bit. This would give your one inch impact more range of usefulness on stuff that's been tightened by the hand of God. Six hundred and eighty four, that's twenty per cent. Really, some of these numbers are surprising to me. This one in particular felt the same, just wasn't translating those beans very efficiently for some reason. Now for an even worse idea, one inch to half inch adapter. If you're using this, you already know the deal. Active desperation scenarios only. Five hundred and eighty seven, so pretty much a clean one hundred foot pounds down from the three quarter inch reducer, but didn't break, and we ran it three times as usual. Though really this is no guarantee at the end of the day at this end of the spectrum. Apply a heavy dose of crossed fingers and face shield with each use of one of these. Here's what that looks like on the chart, a full thirty two percent loss here, finally surpassing the percentage loss we saw with that surprising three eighths to half inch up here. Obviously these runs were shorter though, so expect these to take the cake in a general sense. We tried to keep these sort of torque outputs close for comparison reasons, despite being spread across four Milwaukee guns in three classes of impacts. It's really not a pretty picture of these losses. We saw similar losses from running impact extensions in the three to eight inches in length. Many of the tools didn't feel as happy running these things, so if your gun is wobbling around and bucking more from using an impact adapter, expect that you're losing quite a bit more versus just buying the right tool for the job. And when we're talking about the right tool for the job, sometimes that job is just 4 o'clock on a Friday pushing a broom, so if you find yourself with 15 impact adapters like we have, from half inch to 3 eighths to 1 quarter to 3 eighths to half inch to 3 quarter down to half inch again, etc., you might want to just see what it all can do stacked together like some bad idea sandwich. Well, we'll save you the OSHA citation and odd injury you'll need to make up a story about to your wife and just do that for you, you know, strictly for scientific research, of course. Here's whatever that is. Just 81 foot pounds. I feel that quarter inch really held us back. You know, we could have made over 100 without that bottleneck. A real shame. Appreciate you joining us on this one. If you learned something to take with you on your next rust bucket project, that's awesome. Click subscribe to catch more stuff like this every Friday. And thanks for watching.